Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Now today I'm going to be showing you Blessed Crucible, obviously on VET and of course we're going to do the hard mode as well. Now I'll be using the same setup as before, one tank, one healer, one stamina DPS and one magicka DPS, making sure that no rolls are left. So it's a very, very balanced group across the board. So hopefully this helps and enjoy. So when you first get in you're greeted with a load of doggies at the front gate, they're not too hard to, de to deal with. Get your tank to kind of hold them still in the middle and burn them down with as much AoE as possible. While of course making sure you don't dance around the room. Because if you do, of course they're going to go wild and the tank can't keep up. So just pay attention to that, don't start running around in circles. If you've been watching the series already, you probably know that, but just, to, just remind yourself not to leg it around the room. Same applies here, let the tank go into the middle, pull as many things into the center as possible. However, on the outsides, watch out for the ranged DPS types and the ranged healers. You have to make sure that you interrupt them if they do anything stupid. You don't want to get caught in any AoEs on the ground and you definitely don't want to fire them off because they're quite nasty. Same applies to this uh, pull on the right here. There's one either side actually. Just the same as the last one, get your tank smack bang in the middle, hold them all still as much as you can and also pull in the range stuff. Again, keep your eyes peeled for anything that does any channeled based abilities, especially those archers because you can put down a nasty arrow spray and it really, really hurts. So keep an eye on those interrupts and kill everything with as much area of effect as you possibly can. Now this first boss is a bit of a fast fight to be honest. He doesn't have much health but you do have to watch out and don't stay in front of him. He's got a nasty fear that you need to break, otherwise you run into the beginning of the zone again. You just go running forever, there you go, there's the fear there, you have to break that. The rest of the time, stay out of his face. Because if you don't, that cleave there, that really nasty hit with his club, is going to knock you into space. So, if you're a tank, you can block it, I guess, but um, you can actually get out of it. It's really, really slow, it's really, really long, just don't stand in front of his face. As a DPS, of course, you definitely don't want to be caught there. So the tank can move a bit if he wants to, but for yourselves, sit yourself up just behind the boss. Don't dance around the room and you'll be absolutely fine. It's really not that difficult. It's kind of a stack and burn fest, to be honest. Again, as far as boss fights are concerned and ad pulls as well, make sure that you follow the basics. The basics being that you don't run around the room as a DPS and a healer. You don't start darting around and dodge rolling as a tank. Hold stuff still as a tank. Make sure it's taunted all the time. Keep your buffs up. Protect the group. Do whatever you can to survive and help them survive as well. As far as the DPS and healers are concerned, make sure you stay in a nice formation around the back of the boss if you can help it. Get out of any trouble if you have to, but also make sure that you get back in again after it's gone to make sure that you're not dancing around the room. It's a very simple strategy to follow, but of course you can get a little bit excited inside a fight and start running around and forget where you are. Now, this is kind of an arena event if you like. It's, there is a boss, or mini boss if you like, but beforehand there's several waves of enemies. Now there's plenty at the beginning where the tank can kind of stand and hold them all still, but if you look behind us you can see there's archers, healers, mages, all that kind of... Uh, stuff at the back so you need to make sure that your tank can pull stuff in as quickly as possible or um, as DPS and healers you can kind of run over there and interrupt them or ranged interrupt them if you have one. Failing that another option of course is you can get your tank to go over there and start pulling stuff to them. Whichever version of the two you decide is entirely up to you it doesn't really matter. They're quite quick to get rid of just make sure that you hold them still at least and interrupt the bad stuff. Same as every single dungeon there's going to be ranged stuff interrupted with uh, bashes or crushing shocks or whatever to prevent them from using arrow sprays and big burst AoEs and heals, all that kind of stuff. Just stay on top of it and you'll be fine. Next pull is pretty much the same. Again, get your tank in the middle, hold everything still as much as possible while applying taunts as and when you can. And in the meantime, make sure you pull in those ranged targets from the back there. Now there's a melee guy that just ran straight to us. That's absolutely fine. You can pick him up on the way. But the ranged ones, you really want to get them in quick because it does take a little time for you to run over and interrupt them, of course, unless you've got a range interrupt, but still. It's a lot, lot safer if you just keep them all clustered up and kind of just stay out of their face if you're a DPS or healer. Let the tank take the damage. You can see the four bosses up there. Now, of course, you're used to healers, you're used to ranged DPS as far as magic is concerned, you're used to melee, you're used to heavy attacks, all that kind of stuff. Block the heavy attacks, interrupt the nasty stuff. Now, the trick for the tank on this one is to kind of pin them all together. You can see there's a caster on the right there, there's a two-hander in the middle, there's a mage at the back as well. Get them all in together and hold them still. Area of effect damage should be more than sufficient to kill these all together. If they're very um, low health individually. You don't need to necessarily focus one if you don't want to. And they can be chained and they can be stunned and all that good stuff. Just remember when they go low health, they do turn into werewolf and they start slapping with some really nasty uh, light attacks and jumps and stuns. So make sure, again, that your tank is on full form on this one. Taunt every single one of them. Keep hold of them as much as possible. If something goes wrong, 
and you are a DPS or a healer and one of them starts attacking you, simply block until your tank has recovered or picked up the aggro again. Because if you run around the room, they are going to catch you and they are going to kill you. Above all, however, same stuff as before. Make sure if you're a DPS or a healer, you're behind the enemies rather than in their faces. If there's any interrupts needed, then make sure you do bash or interrupt whichever you've got to hand. Usually the caster and the ranged um, healer will try and run away and cast stuff on the group. Just make sure that you keep your eye on them and interrupt them as and when you can. Melee stuff, tank should stay on top of it, but again, if you do get heavy attack by that two-hander, you've got to block. Normally, um, if it's in a pug, you can see people running around in circles and it gets really, really messy. But when you get practiced at it um, and your tank is kind of on point, it's not too much of a difficult fight. It's only when stuff starts running around the room that it gets messy. Now, this area here, there are several pulls of massive groups of ads. They don't hit too hard unless, of course, you're a squishy and you get primary. So, key point on this one. Again, of course, make sure your tank is holding them in the middle and pulling everything in as much as possible while you do the interrupts if you need to. But again, like I said, the key point is to make sure that the tank always goes bloody fast. Don't go YOLO in ahead as a squishy with 16k health, get wrecked in one shot because everything aggroed you, and blame the tank or the healer. That's your fault. Make sure you hang back, let the tank go first, let him get control of the room, and then you won't be in too much trouble. Again, there's a pull on the left here that kind of meets with the patrol um, dog and dude in the middle. They're not too hard to kill. They don't take that long to get rid of, but there are many of them. So again, always make sure your tank goes in first and starts grabbing the hard stuff. Look around the edges, there's some archers, there's some casters, make sure you interrupt them. You don't want them to heal the big ones because they take longer to kill, and you don't want those archers to fire out arrow sprays because they really, really hurt. Another pull up on the left, there's also another pull up on the right. You can skip these, you don't have to actually kill them all, but if you're after loot, especially after loot in fact, I would encourage you to kill absolutely everything. Not just for practice of course, because it does help you. Uh, kind of get used to dispatching large groups of ads, which you're going to see in a moment. But of course, if you are looting stuff and you're looking for specific sets, the trash mobs can actually drop that stuff. And I don't mean just the armor, they drop jewelry and they drop weapons as well. So just kill everything, make it easier on yourself, make sure you don't miss anything out, especially if you're farming for things. This mini boss up here is a bit of a joke, very, very low health. Two little doggy minions, so just air of effect will hold them down, they'll die very very quickly. But this boss does need to be kept dead center as much as possible, or perhaps in a corner by the tank. Hold on to her the whole time. If you don't, you are in trouble. Now she's got a nasty spin, and a kind of a teleport strike, which should be only on the person that is aggroed. However, if you run too far away, she'll jump at you, so be really careful. And the tank should be the only one in front of the boss, obviously, because that's where our main attacks are. It's got to make sure that the tank blocks the heavies and blocks the spin. If you're a DPS or healer, make sure you stay out of the spin if it happens, and the rest of the time stay behind the boss. If you're jumping around, going left, right, left, right, left, right, you're just showing off. You're not doing anything but uh, being a nuisance. Find your place, stand still, burn her down, move on to the next. She's very, very simple to kill. Now, this next part um, is where you really get tested. This is where you, uh, you find out how good your dancing shoes are as to whether you dance into trouble or whether you can get out of it. There are two absolutely enormous pulls here, one to the right and one to the left. Start off with the one on the right, of course. It helps if you let your tank go in first. You can see how many there are there. Some of them are fighting each other, so it's not too bad, but you need to make sure your, your tank has gone in, got those claws in, grabbed a few taunts and starts chaining everything into the center as soon as possible. This is where you want your ultimates and your big area of effect abilities on the ground. In the meantime, while the tank is struggling to get aggro on just about everything, because don't forget the tank's got resources too, they'll run out, make sure that you keep an eye on stuff that is aiming at you. So keep your eyes open, interrupt stuff that needs to be interrupted, and if it's too much on you, do a couple dodge rolls to get out of the way. But make sure, of course, that you come back into the center so that you aren't making the, the mobs go all rogue and stragglers running all around the room. You don't want them spread out, you want them clustered up. So the tank's job is really rough on this one, but as a DPS or a healer also, you've got to make sure that you don't panic and you keep your composure as much as possible inside this stressful situation. You've got to make sure that you dodge stuff, you've got to make sure you interrupt stuff, but above all, do not run away. If you do, they'll spread out and the tank can't control them. These two next mini-bosses before the major one. One of them's not too bad, the other can be really, really dangerous. This one, in fact, is really, really dangerous. There are four fire beetles. Well, she calls them incineration beetles, but whatever. Um, the tank can hold four of them together and pin them, and the DPS can kind of burn them down, depending on how much damage you've got. But be very, very careful. Part of the way through the fight, they'll kind of burst into flames, and they will spread fire all over the ground. If you're standing in it, 
90% of the time you will die. And then it doesn't matter if you're a vampire or not, you will still die. Fire is aggressive in this game, regardless of vampire or not. And if you get caught in stuff like that, you're in trouble. So you can see the tank is holding them all into position here. We're not running around the room because we don't bloody need to. You can see we've all got our feet. There's two DPS and a healer standing in one place. We've got our own spaces. And you can just kill them in the middle. You see that fire spreading across the floor? That's what you need to stay out of. It is evil. Very, very strong indeed. You can nuke these with ultimates if you've got enough or if you've got them ready after the last fight. If not, just watch your feet. They don't do too much damage in terms of uh, their melee attacks towards the tank, but if you are in the fire, you are dead. This next one is very, very simple. Bloody great giant scorpion. Um, simply get your tank to taunt it, hold it still, and as melee and DPS, you either around the side of it or behind it. You don't need to dance around the room, just find your position and stay there, unless one mechanic in particular happens. There is a heavy attack, by the way, the tank has to keep an eye on. When the scorpion jabs its tail into the ground, it will select a target and make poison appear under its feet. As you can see there, Bob and Weaven is getting peppered with poison. All you need to do is move out of the AOE and then get back to where you were once it's gone. Nothing else is a problem. Heavy attack is for the tank, so make sure you block it. Poison again when it jabs into the ground, get out of the way. If you run around in circles forever, you're just going to die. There you go, see, Bob gets out of it. All gone. Pressure off. This boss here, if you are familiar with Sanctum Orphidia, you will know exactly how to fight this boss because mechanics are pretty much identical in terms of its uh, animations and abilities. I would highly recommend highlighting this target so it's got a big white aura around it so that you can uh, make sure that you never miss basically because his hitbox is kind of in his back foot, which is a bit weird. Hold him still, stay close. If you spread out, he will jump at you. You can see there's two major mechanics in this fight. One is where he's violently bashing the ground repeatedly, which you have to block even if you're standing behind him, otherwise it'll still get you. Also, the other big, big circle, which is a single slam, you need to block that or get out of it. Whichever one of the two you do is up to you, but if you don't block during these mechanics or you don't get out of it, you are in trouble. However, the massive, massive slam, if you dodge roll out of it, make sure you get back in bloody quick, otherwise he is going to jump at you. And then that makes it really difficult, he jumps out of the darts, he does a nasty slam on whoever he decides to hit, and things get messy. If you hold him still, make sure the tank is in his face and everyone else is behind him, block those two slams, you will be fine. There is a heavy attack on the tank, but the tank should be able to see that, and of course, then there won't be any problems. I see a lot of people when they go up against that boss running around in circles and trying to get the troll off them. Little tip, the more you run, the more trouble you're in, because he will jump. He never jumps if you if you stay close together. This room has a couple of enemies in the middle, a big pull to the right and a big pull to the left. If your tank is confident and your group is capable, you can actually pull everything into the center of the room, but fail on that, just take it in two stages. Pin all these on the right first of all and pull in the patrol and enemies. Make sure you interrupt the range stuff, it's really nasty. And then simply go over to the other side or you can get your tank to kind of pull them over once they start thinning out as far as numbers are concerned. Stay out of that big spray if you can't get an interrupt in, by the way, because otherwise it really, really hurts. The next room is a mini boss, and he has quite a few adds, but they're very, very weak in terms of their overall health. They can be a problem, though, if you decide to run in YOLO on your own. So again, always make sure the tank goes in first. If you're a squishy DPS who's a little bit too confident because you've been in Maelstrom one too many times, um, you're going to die. Where Stig is, by the way, there's a lore book right there, just up the little stairs, so make sure you pick that up if you don't already have it. There was a bug before where you had to kill the last boss and then come back in and it would appear, but now it's actually in the right place, so you should be good. As you can see, there are a few enemies in this room alongside the main boss. Make sure the tank charges first, don't aggro anything if you are not the tank, because you will die. As you can see, the archer just went straight for me, both of them. If I went in before the tank, there's a chance that the two melees would have gone for me as well and I would have died. Get your tank to pull everything into the middle, make sure that you hold the boss very, very still, and everybody else should be standing behind or beside the boss. Now, when he puts his staff in the air, he'll fire out a nasty fire circle onto the ground. If you're a tank, you should be fine. If you're a DPS or healer, make sure you step out of it. Also, he'll put his hand up for a little bit longer and he'll start having some purple animation kind of appear around it, like a purple particle effect. If that happens, interrupt him, and then he can't do it. Also, during the fight, he will put up a damage shield if you don't have a huge amount of damage. Just keep burning through his health and you'll be... Absolutely fine. There'd be no problem at all. He's not that hard. He can hit hard if you stand in fire. But that's your own fault. Don't stand in fire. Now, this boss is where every pug fails. You need to be very, very careful with this boss. She has several mechanics that you must follow, otherwise you are dead. She's got one mechanic that I call the wheel. 
And I call it that because when she makes this effect happen, it looks like the uh, the spokes of like a wagon wheel from above, if it's a bird's eye view, for example. Now, the tank should hold her very central if possible. Do not stand in any lava, even that stuff that doesn't look like it's anything other than scenery in the middle, it will kill you. Also, every so often she will spawn flame matronarchs, which will attach a beam to her. When that happens, you have to kill the atronach, otherwise you can't hurt her. So make sure that you focus those. Now, she'll have a heavy attack, which really, really hurts, and then occasionally she'll stab her sword into the ground and do what I call the wheel effect, which is this, all the spokes coming out from the center. If any of those touch you, you're going to die. They are very, very strong. Vampire or not, you're dead. So what you need to do is make sure, as you can see, we're in a, like a triangle formation. Myself, Christina, and Bob are in our own spots, and we're not really moving. We're just staying with the boss as much as possible. Now, when it comes to the wheel, we'll step backwards and just move left and right to stay out of it. You have to be very, very careful and very, very quick to notice it. There's the beam. Remember I said the Atronarchs? Kill the Atronarch, and then she can be hurt. If you don't kill the Atros, she is immune. You see, there's the wheel phase again. I'm just trying to get back to my position, but I'll avoid the fire on the way. Occasionally, she will throw a nasty fire light attack at one of the DPS or the healer, usually if someone's too far away as well but as long as your healer's on point, you shouldn't really die or have a problem with it. However, your tank must be on point with the taunts all the time. Don't drop those taunts. If a DPS gets hit with that heavy attack and they're not blocking, they are toast. Now, the lower her health goes down every phase, the, the more Atronarchs you will receive, up to a maximum of, I believe, three. There's two more now, so you have to make sure that you get those down. I know it's quite uh, stressful on your resources, but you have to make sure that you run over there, get them down, and then try and sustain it along the way. Now you'll notice that she did the wheel mechanic while I went running over there. Spin your camera a little bit sometimes to make sure you can keep an eye on what she's doing or at least have some kind of communication with your group so that you know when the wheel is coming. And when it is, especially if you're long distance, just kind of turn around, have a look for it and you can avoid it quite easily. It's not too bad. You'll also notice that throughout the whole fight there's lots and lots of AoEs landing from around the edge of the arena. That is actually uh, lava rocks and stuff firing out of the lava and if you do stand in it it's going to hurt. So just be very very careful to avoid those while you're killing the Atronarchs as well. You see I dodge rolled out of it there because otherwise I'd be toast but you have to be really really careful. Um, now once the Atronarchs are gone, that one's got stuck in a wall, perfect. It's just a burn fest. Same as before, keep hitting her, block the heavy attack, get out of the wheel and it just repeat repeat repeat. Again, don't dance around the room. Go and kill the Atronarchs, of course, but don't dance around the room in circles. You'll see for the majority of the fight just then, we were kind of all in our own place. And as yeah, no death, no death run as well. Perfect on camera. <laughs> okay, so hopefully that helped. Hopefully that wasn't too boring. And hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to approach that dungeon, especially the vet hard mode side of it, because that is quite rough. Now, there's two more dungeons in this part of the series to go before we get onto the version two dungeons. And then there's going to be eight of those before DLCs. So we're closing in quite quickly plenty more stuff to come so first of all thank you all very very much for watching i hugely appreciate the support and if you're not subscribing please do hit that button it is free also leave a like on the way out if you like the video furthermore if you'd like to support the channel outside of youtube there are some links in the description for patreon for twitter for facebook and of course the website zyronogaming.com and twitch i am on twitch now as well i'm going to be streaming on both platforms from time to time depending on what's going on so I've made a new program now where they basically allow certain streamers to uh, present Twitch drops in the form of free crown crates to people that are watching the stream. It's random, of course. The longer you're watching, the more chance you have to get them and they'll appear inside your inventory in the game. Now, that's a new thing and it is running quite smoothly at the moment. So just keep an eye out for those. And as and when they are live, I will be streaming, of course, so you can get some free stuff. Once again, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.